What's up guys, Rick Denham here, Holy Moly Outdoors. We're going to dive into some steelhead specific videos here for fishing techniques because you guys wanted to see a lot more of what I'm doing on the water or how some different ways to fish that you don't normally do. And one of those things that came up in question was how do I fish a worm? And by no means am I an expert in this, but this last season I really dedicated a lot of my hatchery time uh, to be fishing worms because frankly I didn't have confidence in them but I've caught enough fish in this last season on worms that I definitely feel like my confidence level has gone up quite a bit and a lot of that is because I'm fishing them more often but I'm also picking the right conditions to fish a worm so specifically as we go to talk into this today about fishing worms we're going to divide it into two videos we're first going to talk about what a lot of people want to see is bobber dogging. And bobber dogging is a technique that really has gained a lot of popularity in the last couple years. What you are doing is essentially drift fishing under a float. The float buoyancy is allowing that bait to drag along the bottom but not snag up. It prevents it a lot more than just drift fishing a worm. And drift fishing a worm can be very successful, no doubt. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this, but we're specifically going to talk today about bobber dogging a worm. So, as you guys requested, we're going to dive into fishing steelhead worms under a float, bobber dogging style. Alright guys, so like I said, we are diving into bobber dogging a pink worm. Now, there's a couple different ways you can rig this. I actually found out about you know these different styles of rigging based on YouTube. I did some looking around. Uh, Mad, R Mad River Manufacturing has a, a good video on how to rig up for drift fishing a worm, so that concept would apply here. Um, JP's Guide Service did a good one about wacky rigging a worm, and frankly that's the style that I chose to go with. I like the look, it's something different, and I think a lot of our fish are going to respond to something different when they haven't seen it and really in our streams with the amount of pressure that we get sometimes just throwing a bobber dogging rig is a different way to present your technique to the fish as opposed to just floating jig or just regularly fishing them and I think because a lot of that success comes about by changing it up and doing something different than everybody else so really to get started on bobber dogging you gotta pick your setup correctly and we'll go through here a little bit of like what I like to use um, you want a longer rod so I happen to have an Akuma SST this happens to be the float drifting model so it is a 10-6 rod and it's paired up with a Daiwa 2500 um, legless really like that reel it's a nice entry level so to say not too fancy but definitely gets the job done it's spooled up with some nice braid I think that's 30 or 40 pound braid on there and what I end up doing for bobber dogging and maybe some of you have heard this but um, you'll get to the point where you can see this knot here the braid runs down and then I tie right where that little knot is is my top shot and I'm running the top shot with bloodline mono and bloodline is unique because this has a floating capability um, and it really helps in your mending because a lot of your lines fluorocarbon in particular is a little bit heavier so it will sink now not to say that this is you know the the end all to replace braid but it helps a lot if you have that bobber way out in a drift and you want to mend up just a slightly you can pull it up with that longer rod and it really works with you as opposed to against you. Now then, you've seen I did a video on a bobber dogging setup with a clear drift float previously using stick lead. So that concept would apply here. But essentially you have your bobber stop up the line. You then have a bead there. I'm trying to get this all in one deal. You have your bobber stop then a little bead, then I run a corky, and then I run a clear drift, but you can run any kind of float. I prefer these. Um, a clear drift here, this happens to be 
a three quarter ounce, you want something with a little bit more buoyancy. I run the little egg bobber stops from Bomac, work really well in this case. Then I go down to a three way swivel, and I happen to have a Dave's Tangle free weight on here. But you can, like I said, run a stick lead. You can also even run slinkies. So, something like that. All preference. I happen to like the Dave's Tangle Free because a lot of the runs that I'm fishing are not as snaggy. Now, you have to find what your preference is so the weight can be whatever. There's a lot of good ones out there. Um, as you go to then, you have your whole rig set up. You tie off and you're, you can either use a three-way swivel like I have here or you can use something different. And then you get down to choosing how you want to rig that worm. And like I said, you could drift fish it in a sense where the worm is rigged with the tail end facing. Um, you got a worm here. You would have the line come through and come out about three quarters of the way down the worm so that tail can still move in the water. And then you put a sequin down there to keep it from ripping the worm on the hook. That would be a drift fishing way so this worm is traveling this way in the water. Now if you wacky rig it or rig it nose down, which is the way I like to do it because I feel like you could get more movement out of the worm itself. Wacky rigging looks like this. That worm, you can see the tail hanging over it. Um, this one's caught some fish so it's kind of ripped down further than it probably needs to be. but that's how it looks in the water. So that worm is moving every bit so with that current as it travels down the stream. So it's very very effective and really excuse me. So it's very very effective and really a special way to fish these. Something different the fish probably haven't seen. That's why I think it can be very productive. Um, as far as then you choose what worm brand you want. My goodness, there's so many out there. Um, from Mad River Worms here, they work well. I happen to be running a small three inch worm on this one that you just saw. That happened to work well for our hatchery fish. Now I know a lot of the guys that fish the natives on the coast want something bigger. Um, X Factor Tackle has been really good for me, as always, that's what you see on this guy here. I colored that one up. Um, custom Nightmares. But they have a lot of great colors that you can go with. A little different profile. Clear Drift Floats has their own line of worms. Those work really well. Have some great colors. And then the size range, you kind of have to think what you're targeting, right? So if I'm going after five to ten pound hatchery fish and the conditions are more normal to a little dirty that three inch worm which is what you see here will probably be the best one now if I see a little bit dirtier water you might go to something more of a four inch worm it's all preference and uh, really just up to you because you can go any steelhead you know, sporting goods store for your steelhead section and you're going to find 12 to 10 different manufacturers of different worms I mean, here's a glow in the dark one by clear drift really a killer combo works great on hatchery fish so it's all preference to you but you have to kind of take into consideration the fish size you're targeting because this presentation a small three inch worm like this you can see how this is how it would look wacky rig but this small worm presented this way is going to appeal more to those smaller hatchery fish now in some river systems where you have some bigger fish that's where you go and dive into you know, your four and your six inch worms because those wacky rigged are going to look completely different so there's a four inch um, grab another four inch here. 
it's gonna look a lot different. You have more tail, more movement on those bigger worms. So it's just all based upon how you want to set them up. Now, what we can do here then is showcase to you guys how easy it is to rig one of these up. I then just put them all in little neat baggies so I know I can just grab them. Now some guys put them on a leader roll, um, you can do that too. But uh, I like to keep my tackle organized so we're going to show you guys here then how to set one of these up for steelhead.